everybody, it's the Red Banana 7 here, back with another Minecraft video. And today, as you can probably tell from the title of this video, I'm going to be doing 15 things you probably didn't know about Minecraft. So, starting us off at number 1, let's jump right into it. Everyone knows that slimes damage the player by jumping, but a slime does not need to be able to jump to... Okay, well he is now, but that's just because he's glitched in a block. But he doesn't need to be able to jump to be able to damage the player. Moving on to number two. Enchanting any items that can be worn with protection will protect you from taking damage. More so than just regularly falling. See, I took five hearts there. So if I go back up and put on this wither skull that has protection four on it and then I jump off I only take four hearts of damage this also works for pumpkins and all the other skull types and on the same line as this so it's also number two wearing armor with feather falling on it will cause you to take less damage. So wearing just plain leather pants, I still take 5 hearts of damage. But if I go up here, take these leather pants and enchant them with feather falling 4, oh, I now only take 1 heart of damage. Coming in at number three is that zombies holding zombies can pick up items. Most people know that. But if they pick up a sword with an enchantment on it and they hit you, the enchantment on the sword will still take effect. So if you see here when I'm in... No, don't die, zombie. His sword has fire aspects, so he set me on fire. And I know that he is on fire, but it's from the sword. I'm going to let you die. And actually, I need to switch back to creative. Give me a second here. I think it's this one. Yeah. Oh, he, he died. Okay, coming in at number four. Glowstone is the only block in the game that a torch cannot directly pass power through. So I can have redstone on top and a torch below, and the redstone won't receive power. Any other block, the redstone gets powered. And this makes glowstone one of the most useful and tragically not known about blocks in Minecraft. It's, it's useful and sad. Okay. Coming in at number five, we have the fact that all skulls and soul sand produce the same particle effect when broken. So if you watch closely, when I smash this skull and this soul sand, you get the same particle effect. And I don't know if there's planning on changing this, but that's how it is as of 1.6.2 is the version I'm recording this in right now. So, coming in at number 6, almost forgot, we have a player cannot take damage from two sources at the same time. So, if I fall off here, you will notice that I take six hearts of damage. But if I fall off and hit that tripwire, the dispenser will shoot me at the same time, but because I can only take damage from one source at a time, I still only take four hearts, but there is an arrow in the side of my face. Okay, number seven is a couple things about anvils. One, if you drop a damaged anvil, the graphic will immediately make it look repaired until it hits the ground. So the cracks go away while it's falling, and then it hits the ground and they come back. Anvils falling onto pressure plates will activate them, even if their block counterpart isn't on the pressure plate. So it's the f action of the anvil falling on the pressure plate that activates it. A falling anvil can activate a tripwire, 
It can also be placed and held up by a tripwire. And placing it in the block where the tripwire is will cause it to completely destroy the tripwire. And I have no idea where the wire goes. I think it's just gone. <coughs> oh, excuse me. For coughing. Okay, number eight. We have... Okay, hold on. Sorry about that, guys. Coming in at number eight, we have that if you are riding in a minecart and you fall into water, you will still take as much damage as you would if you happened to fall on land. So water does not break your fall in a minecart. And I need some health. Oop. Okay. So at number nine, we have saddled pigs in minecarts. Saddling a pig and placing it in a minecart will allow you to ride it like a car under your control. The only difference is that all the controls are backwards, so I'm going to press the back key now and watch where I go. Forward key, left key, right key, everything's backwards. Now if you go into the this F5 mode, it makes it a little easier because everything goes the way you think it should. But still, it's kind of slow and not all that useful. Uh, go, go, go away. Go, go away. Also, if you're riding one on minecart track, you can control which direction it goes. It goes fast and will go infinitely. You can also stop it mid mid cart and go back in other directions. So that's a bit more useful. Number 10 is that a player can actually jump higher than one block. And you can show this with the snow block because it goes up slowly. So if you do the math on this, uh, Minecraft or real wor world, this is about three feet nine inches. And I can very easily jump up this. But the interesting thing is that no mob can jump that high. So if I spawn a pig and he's following my carrot, he can't get over this wall, but he can go around it. Come on, little piggy. Come on. No. Oh, oh, that's not what I meant to do. Hiding the evidence. Okay. Now at number 11, we have some things with blindness and night vision potions. Having a night vision potion effect while in lava will cause it to get bright red and start pulsing. And this has absolutely no purpose, it's just kind of annoying, so if you have night vision, don't jump in lava. Uh, okay. Having a blindness effect, though, while jumping into lava makes the lava entirely disappear, so you can see all around it. So this is actually pretty helpful if you want to build, I don't know, an underground lava room. You can see through the lava to get to it. As long as you have fire resistance. Because that, that would be bad. So coming in at number 12. We have also blindness and night vision. If you equip blindness and night vision at the same time. Your entire screen will go black. Until one of the potions wears off. So you can see absolutely nothing. And if I hadn't set that for 10 seconds. That would have been an issue. So coming in at number 13. Sorry about that guys. But, uh, as I was saying, coming in at number 13, we have an interesting thing with wolves. A wolf will always follow a sheep, whether or not, it, an untamed wolf will always follow a sheep, whether or not it can actually get to it. If you, th there we go. So it gets the whole red in its eyes thing, and it wants to kill that sheep, but it can't get to it, So, it's, but it's still going to follow it. So you can really, you can control the wolf. Based on the sheep behind the wall. And the wall does not need to be opaque. He can see through iron blocks. So you could have this in some sort of map where you are controlling a wolf. Who doesn't. 
Okay, normally he would go back over there. I don't know why he's not. Go. Yeah, there we go. Oh, okay, the wolf, the sheep is coming back. Okay, so number 14. Attacking a blaze with snowballs will cause it to take damage. So this is actually a pretty good way to defeat blazes if you take a bunch of snowballs into the end. And I'm going to actually switch to survival mode and see how many snowballs I need. Well, I can just count. It was 11 snowballs to kill a blaze. So that's not that bad. Now, number 15 is probably the least known fact that I will be going over. And that is that zombies and skeletons standing on soul sand during the day will not catch fire, while other mobs, of course, will. But if you have your monsters standing on soul sand, they will not burn. So I advise you not to put soul sand around your house, because that could cause some issues. But, it, you know, it's up to you. So, thanks for watching the... He picked up the bone from his dead friend. You sicko. Okay. So thanks for watching. 15 things you probably didn't know about Minecraft. 